Hello everyone. Uh, thanks for joining me in this session. Okay, uh, so today I will be going to talk on policy driven approach to secure your CI CD workflow. Okay, so all of us know about CI CD, right? And how, what are the complexity we face, how security is much more important in that. So I will be, I'll, uh, so in this talk, what we going to learn is like how policy will be helpful to, to manage our CI CD in a securely. All right. Uh, myself Savita, so I work for a Red Hat and I do contribute mostly on Tekton, around the Tekton, uh, multiple projects of Tekton and you can find me over here, there. Alright, so this is the pretty much agenda we have it for today. So basically I will be uh, give a brief about what is cloud native CI CD and how Tekton is, can be called it as a cloud native CI CD. And as Tekton is a big org, so I cannot, uh, I, I mean we cannot talk entirely all the projects in a single talk. So I have chosen pipelines as code and Tekton chains because these, with these two, com I mean with these two, I can able to manage my entire CI, CI flow. And then I will deploy my workload using Ago CD and I'll, I'll, after that I'll start use Kiverno for doing my policy stuff in order to make sure that I, I do follow all the, uh, like, uh, all the security things. And then finally we have a demo where I will be showcasing uh, how I can make use of Tekton, Argo and Kyverno policies to make the end-to-end -end flow. All right, so pretty much all of us know about the CI CD. So I quickly cover like what is cloud native CI CD. So we call it, uh, we call uh, CI-CD as a cloud native if it follows the principles like uh, deploying that thing as a containers and manages inside the container orchestrators and which obeys the principles of serverless which does the auto scaling based on the request and follows the DevOps pattern. So this is the uh, few differences I have noted down like how cloud native CI CD is different from traditional one. So, okay, when I, when I talked about the, I mean, like why we, what is, what make us to call the CI CD as cloud native and I mentioned about the container, serverless and DevOps. In that, Tekton is one of the platform or we can say or the product or project which obeys the cloud native CI CD rules. Now, uh, before I start, I just wanted to know like how many of you heard about Tekton before this talk? All right. Oh, pretty much. I mean like uh, very less I see. So I, I can see like I am happy that I got this opportunity to explain everyone what is Tekton uh, in a like from a basic converts. All right. Okay. Uh, Tekton is an open source project. It is part of CD foundation. It's not yet in the CNCF, but I, I, I don't know exactly, but there is some discussion going on to move it to the CNCF, uh, uh, under, under the CNCF. So, Tekton, as I mentioned, we call it as a CI CD because it, it is built for Kubernetes, I mean it is built for Kubernetes as it, it is native to Kubernetes. It, it has all the features of Kubernetes, like it scales on demand, it, it, it handles the security, security things very well and it is very flexible as it's native to Kubernetes. All right, so every project, every uh, tool have some basic concepts, right? Like in Kubernetes, if I want to write my application, and, sorry, if I want to run my application, what all things I should know? One is deployment, right? And service pod containers. If I know these four concepts, I could able to write my deployment YAML, create it and I can write my service YAML and I can uh, exec, ex, uh, I mean like I can view that service, uh, view my application. Similarly in Tekton, we have a core concepts like step, task, pipeline, input, output resources, task run and pipeline run. Okay, so I, I want to go, I want to, uh, I want to tell these concepts in a diagrammatical way. So let's suppose 
the uh, like in kubernetes we have a containers right which does actions based on whatever image you give whatever the command argument similarly in tecton step is very we can compare step is similar to containers step does the operations whatever commands whatever argument env image we give all right so the, uh, so steps can be like individual operations like i want to clone the code and i want to build the code push the code i mean i want to after the push i want to get the digest to see whether the push is success and then finally i can go and deploy it so these are like steps we can consider okay part of operations i want to do individually now what are task so task is a template or i can say static template which actually contains more than one step so it means task can, a task can have one step or it can have a multiple steps and the task can be interconnected each other so that output of one task can be given as an input to other task now the question arises here why can't i as as i mentioned task can have one step or multiple step why can't i write one single task which can have all these steps together but there is a uh, there is a concept here called reusability like in jenkins we have a plugins right we can plug in and plug out similarly in tecton we have a task which is kind of a reusable so let's suppose i have a scenario where i want to build java i want to build go the building process for both the languages are different but the cloning can be same for both both the languages so that's why i have divided my task into three different ways so that i can make use of the fetch task for all the languages but task build is only specific to particular languages so this way if we write task such a way that it can be reusable for other purpose as well so that is the one benefit in tecton of task now in the task are just a static template in order to instantiate those object or resource we have a uh, resource called task run now these task can be run individually right but again if i if i have a scenario where i want to handle multiple things like uh, in deployment we always try to make sure that we we should not run pod alone itself right we always run with the deployment so similarly in tecton it is it is recommended to have a pipeline which has set of task and run that pipeline using a resource called pipeline run so basically what i want to say is that step ta, uh, step is a uh, sorry task is a template which can have multiple steps and pipeline is again a template which can have multiple task and in order to run those resources we have a pipeline run and task run okay now as i mentioned like tecton is again a big uh, this org so it has multiple projects so i will be talking about the pipelines as code today so what is that basically it's a opinionated ci based on tecton so i mean you can whatever you are doing with pipelines as code can be done with tecton different projects like tecton pipelines and tecton triggers but thing is why i am going for pipelines as code because it has a seamless integration with different source code managements like gitlab bitbucket and github and uh, some of the benefits what i get is it is version control as i mentioned and it is portability once you write the pipeline run you can just keep in your uh, source code management or the project and that can be used so collaboration means it it has uh, i mean it it is uh, can be shared within the team and also it has a good collaborations and all then automation yes this is the major benefit like with the pipelines as code in uh, with the pipelines as code what you can as an end user what i can do i can just go and do a pull request or push request on my project so everything will be taken care and the and after that the status will be reported back to my source code management so that is the one of the major use case here i mean like let's suppose i sent a pull request after all the process it will just reply reply me back with the status okay whether it is a failure or success and where and all the pipeline runs are uh, ran what are the steps or task it has executed 
and scalability as of course because it is on top of tecton tecton is on top of kubernetes scalability is inbuilt and change uh, change tracking because we use source code management tools here all right so pipelines uh, right now in the i mean in the current state pipelines as code looks for dot tecton directory in a project so that is the source of truth we can say if your project have dot tecton directory then all the pipeline runs from that folder will be run based on the action or based on the event but we have a uh, we have a scope of removing this dependency so that for a new beginner if they want to try out tecton they can just install on their cluster and just uh, raise a pull request everything will be automated they no need to add the dot tecton directory as well but that is still under discussion all right so i just this is this is our uh, uh, what to say uh, understanding i mean our thoughts like the pipelines as code version github actions because most of us are very familiar with github actions and all this can be done with github actions but let's suppose i have a project i have a scenario where i want to run my ci cd for gitlab bitbucket github so it is like i need to have different different ci solution for different different source code management but if i if i instead of that if i use pipelines as code right i can i can remove all those dependencies like uh, for github usage person they are very comfortable with github workflow but for same thing when 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 their code base moved to gitlab they have to learn the new ci thing but in case of pipelines as code it is common across the all the source code management so that overburden is not there okay so this is the high level overview i mean as an user from the git platform they will send a pull or push request the request goes to the uh, pipelines as code and does the processing and finally report the status back to pull or push request to the respective git platform so what are the security best practices which can be uh, utilized or which can be get when we use pipelines as code one of the thing is like it doesn't i mean we have a granular control over the ci ci part where we can control okay who and all have access to what all operations so the pipelines as code policy does that for us and we have a owners file where we can add multiple i mean different different reviewers who can have permissions on that particular project and like token generation i mean like we have a particular uh, permission level for private repo and public repo right so and we have we support multiple uh, comments of retesting your pipe i mean uh, events like whether you want to rerun the request then go for retest and test whether you want to cancel some request we we have supported for cancel as well and we have also for okay to test that indicates like okay let's suppose i have a uh, i mean there is a project but i i don't have permission to raise pr over there i mean once i, I can raise but ci won't run for me because that uh, that github doesn't understand my username and all right so the maintainer of that project can add okay to test to allow my pr to run the ci and all so this kind of things we are supported in pipelines as code today all right tecton chains what is this okay so everywhere we are hearing the word like slsa right so basically we want to secure our pipeline run so secure our pipeline run uh, in every possible way so te in tecton that is possible using the project called chains so chains what it is does it 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 actually what it does it it sign or it does the in to to attestation for your pipeline run or as well as sign the image so these two operations will be done by chains today it is either key based or keyless and underneath it uses cosign and the tecton chain has a controller which continuously watches for the pipeline run and task run and once the those task run pipeline run completed then chains does the signing of the image or sign uh, attestation to the pipeline run all right so argo cd 
do i am i uh, not the contributor to argo cd but now i have started using the argo cd as an end user so i have my ci ready now my image is built and it is signed now i want to deploy it deploy it on my cl uh, cluster in a automated way or like if i mean uh, uh, because argo cd supports in a multiple things right like multi cluster image updater dynamically and all those things so argo cd like we had a couple of talks today where we got to learn about the argo cd what it is what are the gitops principles along i mean uh, the principles which are follows the gitops principle followed only argo cd or is there any other project so we we got to know about the flux as well today in one of the call so what are those gitops principle so basically it is like a declarative it it it, it means like i have written some statement and i i i am telling the tool either it can be argo or flux that the statement which i have written should be like that it it, it should not matter how it how it will do then version version and immutable i mean like as it's a git based uh, everything is controlled over there so we have a sha and all so that's where immutability will come then sorry pulled automatically i mean like we have we can have a policies like whether it is a automatic or manual policy uh, to pull the things and continuously reconcile to make sure that actual state matches with the desired state so this is the high level architecture i referred the standard argo documentation so basically it majorly have three components api server uh, then repository service and then uh, uh, application controller so api server is kind of a gateway uh, which looks for which is written as a grpc or rest so basically ui cli and api based mechanism will be handled and the request comes to api and it also manages reporting status back to slack email whatever it is configured then application controller is actually making sure that your actual state matches with the desired state and it also helps in managing multi cluster deployment and all those things then coming to repository service it it actually helps in caching your git repository data and all those stuff so that the synchronization can be happen uh, very well all right now comes to the actual thing which is called policies all right so anybody uh, have heard about the policies or any one of you like already started using in your day to day work and and how many of you know the value of policies how it makes things easier for you all right so policies this is my understanding that policies is nothing but this set of rules or instructions which help you to like completely block or do some modification or generate things for you right so let's suppose uh, i i understand this way policies is like like i am joining as an employee to one company right so there is a rule saying that a person is not allowed into the office until and unless they, he, he or she have the id card so that is kind of a gateway for you or like a uh, validating rule for you so that it will reject i mean uh, they will stop you there right so that is kind of a validation can be done if, if we want to compare so that is where the policy things will happen so this policy will help us to un do the code quality very well security things then deploy deploying the things before uh, i mean uh, to verify all the images and all signing uh, stuff before deploying actually into the cluster right so basically in a one term if i want to say policies help us to allow uh, avoid to do the bad things in our software or tools now uh, it it's our responsibility to control or prevent those things so we have many policy uh, solutions today like one of them is like kiverno opa and six store policy controller so i have tried with uh, kiverno and uh, six store policy controller and today i will be talking about the kiverno this is one of the policy provided or we can say uh, with the help of kiverno we can handle policies very well and it is native to kubernetes 
that's where i started investigating some stuff here because tecton is native to kubernetes and kaverno is native to kubernetes so maybe like the that yaml syntax and all will help me to achieve most of the policy things with kaverno but again it depends on our use case entirely which policy framework we want to use so it's basically a engine designed for kubernetes so kaverno always does uh, three things like it does the validation it does the mutation and generate right validation is like strictly prohibited mutation is like if you want to do some data changes for your request and generating stuff and it also does the verification of uh, image signing using cosign and into to attestation and it also matches annotations labels namespace and do some stuff what not to do what to do so those things we can control at each level using the admission controllers okay so for my scenario how kaiverno is useful for me to do the ci cd stuff so as i mentioned i am using tecton for ci argo for cd so i want to ensure my pipeline run is always should have a namespace in that right and also my pipeline run should obey the security context uh, uh, permissions and i my my pipeline run should only have reference to pipeline which is signed bundle not like any other thing and always i have one more scenario where i want to trigger my pipeline run only if certain labels or annotation matches and from the cd side i want to execute the deployment through argo cd if if and only if the images are verified i mean the signing of the image is verified uh, so uh, th that is the major thing i am more interested today so let's quickly see the demo so in the demo part what i am going to do is like i will be having a pipeline and the kaiverno does the initial checking for me so once that is success i have a task called fetch which is fetching the code and storing it in the storage then i have a static uh, tools to check my go wet issues and linter issues and once that is done i'll go and build and push it to the registry now now the question arises like where is signing of the image happening is it inside the build step no i am not doing any of the steps related to the signing of the image that's where i mentioned about the tecton chains so tecton chains what it does once the build task is completed it tries to see that image and sign that image and push it to the registry so this part is called ci so once this is done i have a signed image ready with me so i will ask before the deploying of the image i i want to do image verification and that's where can be done using kaiverno so i will be so i am using kaiverno to verify my image and if the image verification is not proper it will straight away reject it won't go to the further step but if it is success if the verification is success it will go and deploy the application using argo cd okay so i will quickly uh, go and show the demo so actually i have recorded the demo because i have many things to configure so that's where i'll just pause it for a minute and yeah so this is the repo i have okay yeah so this is the repo i have i have all the instruction and setup so for time constraint i have uh, deployed everything so basically the tecton chains pipelines pipelines as code uh, controllers then argo cd kiverno everything is deployed okay so now let me go back to playing the video uh, the steps which i have followed all right so everything is deployed now the first step is okay so these are the list of policies from the ci side i want to validate so i have kept all the policies in the uh, policies folder so i have couple of things but in the demo i will be showing about the 
require annotations, right? So what this policy does is, so what I'm, uh, what, what we are doing here is like uh, the pipeline run annotation should not have this max keep runs value more than three, right? So this is the policy I have written so that whenever pipeline run have any such annotations whose value is greater than, uh, sorry, whose value is greater than three should fail, should reject the request. Now, uh, going back, right? So this is the Tecton folder I was talking and here I have kept my YAML, pipeline run YAML. So before the demo starts, I, I just wanted to give some highlights on these YAML parts, specifically the annotation part. So the thing is like, if I just write dot Tecton directory and pipeline run, how does the uh, platform or I can say Tecton pipelines as code will get to know that pipeline run should trigger for pull request or push request. So there should be some mechanism to mention that, right? So that is where this annotation does. So here we mention about the event, like what type of event we are looking for, either it is a pull request or push. And which branch actually the event should focus, either it is a main branch or any other non-main branch or even we can specify all ref tax star. Then the another important thing I want to mention about the task, right? So it is uh, pipeline, uh, so okay. As I mentioned like in Tecton, tasks are usable entity, right? So similar to Docker hub where images are hosted, in Tecton we have this catalog hub, hub, uh, hub, uh, hub, hub uh, thing where all the tasks are hosted. This is, not, this is upstream, so multiple folks contributed. So how these tasks become generic because they have written such a way that it can be used for multiple purpose. So that's where, like here I have mentioned three tasks. So what pipelines as code do is like it will try to fetch these specified tasks from the hub. And even we have the flexibility to specify particular repository from which task can be fetched as well. And this is the annotation which I have uh, interested, which is like max keep runs, uh, which indicates that how many pipeline runs should be there in your cluster. So in, in the policy, uh, okay, let me go back to policy. So in the policies I have mentioned, it should not exceed more than three, right? but uh, more than uh, more than less than three, but it is in this YAML, it is five. So obviously it should fail according to the policy rules. Now let's go and see the, see it in the action. All right, so here, let me just uh, little bit move forward. So yeah, so it has created the policy. Okay, let me, yeah, it has created, creating the policy. Then I am doing the get cluster policy to show that the policy is created, okay. Now the next task is to create some pull request, okay. So as I mentioned that the here on event is just push, but I want my CI to be run for pull request as well. So that's where I have changed that uh, event and sending the pull request now. So you can see that creating the pull request that's it, it should work now accordingly, but let's see, yeah, it, it doesn't work. It is because you can see error in the respective pipeline as code, uh, pipeline as code controller. It is saying some message that repository match for this thing is not done. Okay, let me show you what is that. So when I mentioned like whenever I, a pull request comes to a particular repository, how pipeline says will how pipeline says code get to know that the matching of the like the request coming from the particular repository should match so that the pipeline will should get triggered so that is where repository cr uh, play important role so it actually make sure that this cr whatever url specified in this rep cr should match with the event coming from that particular project so here in this demo, it is missing. So that's where the CI did not trigger and it said the message saying that repository did not match. 
So that's where I'm checking whether my cluster has that repository in the particular namespace. So it is, it, it was not there. So I just went ahead and created using TKN pack. Now what is TKN pack? So in Kubernetes we have kubectl tool, right? So for Argo CD it has its own tool. So similarly for Tekton we have TKN and Tekton pipelines as code we have a TKN pack CLI tool. All right, so now repository CR is created. So now what I can do, I can go back to my pull request. Now what is the way so that I can rerun the same pull request? One is like I can close and reopen the pull request, but other way is like I, I have a, this GitOps command which I mentioned, like I can do test retest, test or slash retest to re-trigger my CI. So now this time the CI should get success. Uh, okay, yeah, okay, all right. So it is failing now. Let me go and check the details, the reason for the failure. So we should, uh, this is accepted reason, oh yeah. So we, because uh, in that pipeline run, the max keep run value is five, but the policy check started kicking off here, saying that I cannot allow this pipeline run because the value is not matching properly from the annotations. So that's where this got failed. Now what I can do, I can edit the file in that same pull request to change the max uh, annotation value from five to like lesser than three. Okay, so this is the annotation. So I'm just editing that annotation to some number like two and saving, uh, saving the changes. So this time it, it again re-trigger the CI so that uh, this time it, it obeys the policy rules, it allows, it allows the pipeline run to go ahead and create it. So now you can see that it started running the CI. So it will take couple of minute and we can come here. This is the dashboard we have uh, from the Tekton. So I can just show this is how the dashboard look like. So. In this dashboard, the pipeline run is running. You can see here this running uh, thing and I can go to the respective pipeline run and see the task. What are the tasks which are there in that pipeline run? So first it is doing fetching, then doing the static check and then it is finally building and pushing the image. <coughs> yeah, so it will take time because it has to build, it has to push to the registry and all. This is my query registry where I'm actually waiting for the image to be uh, uh, updated here. Okay, so let me open up another video about the this thing. Yeah, so after a couple of minute, once build and push is successful, I should see CI something like this green. And if I go to the details page, I will see success, what in which namespace and what is the pipeline run and what are the stages in that pipeline run. Everything is mentioned. So this is where I mentioned from the pipelines as code uh, presentation in this particular slide saying that once uh, the everything is done, the status will be reported back, right? Okay, so let me rerun this uh, thing. Yeah, so here everything is success, the bull, uh, push is success. I should see a new image here and the signing of the image has been done using cosine. All right, so the next job of mine is to go and deploy using Argo CD, right? So now, so before deploying Argo CD, let me walk through the policies which I have mentioned, right? So for Argo CD, we should have a kind called application so where we will mention what is the repository URL where the actual deployment or service uh, YAML reside and what is the destination, I mean the cluster information where we want to deploy our uh, application and what is the namespace and all the information. And coming to policy where I will be doing the image verification. So let me show that verify image. So here I will be specifying the public key the key from which the image has been signed during the build process using tecton chains, 
right? So that key I will specify here. This is a key based authentication, uh, key based verification. But we have an option uh, without key based that is called keyless verification. And it always, because end of the day, Argo CD creates a deployment and deployments create a pod. So image will be there as part of the pod, right? So that's where I have specified resources as pod. All right, so let me, uh, re I mean, start this uh, recording thing. So yeah, I am, I just explained these thing now, right? So I'm create, I, I'm checking that whether that policy exists or not. So it's not there. So I'm creating the policy, right? So policy has been created, okay? So now it's time to create the Argo application. Okay, so it's time to create the Argo application. So we have a nice UI from the, by the way, we have nice UI from the Argo side, like to create, okay, let me reduce this, yeah. So if I go back to application, right, okay, it's uh, timed out, okay, fine. Yeah, so we have, we, we, one way we can apply the CR application or else I can go back to UI and create application from there. I can specify required information, what is the repository URL and where, uh, what is the destination URL, all those stuffs I can specify, and where my actual deployment resides, then the namespace where I want to actually run these things. So here you can say I have, I'm copying all the things from YAML so that I can show it through UI as well. All right, so now the image which is signed, okay, the signed image, okay. So this is the image name I have, the, 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 the important things of Kyverno is I cannot just give the tag because it, it has signed the SHA. So it while verification, it requires SHA only. It doesn't just take the tag of the image. So that's where I have to specify the uh, SHA for Kyverno based uh, verification, policy verification. So let me create it. So it will, it, it will start syncing, right? So it will, it will st start syncing with the GitHub application from the GitHub repository to the cluster. And I see a error message here saying that the policy verification is failed. Okay, so let's see the reason. Uh, in order to just to make sure I'm looking into the pod logs as well. I mean, the I, I would say it, these are the different pods, but admission controller is the one which actually has the failure reason what, what was, what what happened. So I am checking the logs here and it is very well mentioned that the invalid signature. So it means the public key which I have given in my cluster policy is not the right one from which the image has signed. So that's the reason the failure happened. Now. Let me uh, copy the right uh, public key which I have locally and update it in the cluster policy so that it should work from there, yeah. Mm, yep, so let me just change, uh, I mean copy this and update this verify image policy, right. So after a couple of seconds, let me pause for a minute here. Okay, so I'm just editing those uh, uh, lines. Then I'm just applying it. I can do a kubectl edit as well as apply, anything is fine. All right, so let me go back to the, uh, yeah, now just rechecking whether the content is proper or not. So now going back and waiting for this thing to be done. So it took couple of time, oh, one, I, I mean like it took couple of time because it has to resync everything. Uh, the one way is like wait for it, other way is like just uh, kill the, uh, I mean kill the pod and it should come up. So that's where I have done in another uh, recording. So after a couple of seconds, I just stopped that recording and re-recorded that it is synced okay. So this time the verification of, of the image is proper. That's why it, it went ahead and deployed the application. All right, uh, so that's all for the demo side and 
from the Tecton, Argo CD and Kyverno based. And thanks for listening. And this is the QR code where we can get uh, Red Hat developers, blogs, documentation, everything. So if someone wants to learn about different stuff, so yeah, please take a copy of it. All right, thank you, thank you everyone for keep, keeping so calm and patiently. Thanks a lot.